Hi, I'm Courtney Hudson and I'm a history interpreter here at George Washington's Mount Vernon. Today, we're at the Washington Library to meet with Samantha Snyder, who is a librarian. In her job, she helps researchers, historians, and students with their research and with finding historical documents. One really cool part of her job is she gets to help families research their own family history, which is also called genealogy. So I do have a few questions for you. Awesome, well, I'm very excited to answer them. Oh, great, well, I get to give tours to young people from all over the country. And sometimes they find it difficult to make a direct or personal connection to the past. Uh, however, all of us alive today we had ancestors alive when George Washington lived. So my first question is, did George Washington, was he interested in his family history? He was very much interested in his family history. What George would do and Martha Washington is take notes in their family Bibles. They would write down uh, when people were born, when people died, when people got married, all sorts of things. So future generations could see those same names. So what would I do today if I wanted to learn more about my family history? Where would I start? So the first thing that I would start mm -hmm. with is to talk to an adult in your life. So that could be a, a mom or a dad, a grandma or a grandpa, aunt or an uncle, cousins, and ask them if they knew about the people that were alive in your family before you were. Okay, so it sounds like just speaking to your family members is the best way to start. Absolutely. Okay, so then do you hear at the library do you collect those sorts of interviews or oral histories? You know, we don't have a lot of oral histories here, but one department here has collected oral histories of people that are descendants of the formerly enslaved community at Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. How can a place like the library help you then learn more about your family? So what a library can do is that some libraries have different family, different records that you can find your family in. You could look at what is called a census. Um, the census is a document that was started in 1790 that takes um, every single person's name and registers it for people who lived in the United States. Wow, that is a long record. Yeah. Uh, I was just thinking as you were speaking, you know, you might not learn a lot about your ancestors specifically, but from the census, if you learned that they lived in Philadelphia, maybe in the year 1776, you could piece together that they lived in the same city when the Declaration of Independence was signed. Absolutely. Yeah. And even if you don't know their names, mm -hmm. you can do things like read about where they came from. If your ancestor immigrated here or was taken and brought here from another country, you can read about the country they came from. You can read about the city they lived in. You could look up pictures of their towns, even read newspapers that were published during the time they were alive. And who knows, if you do learn their name, they might pop up in there. Let's recap what we talked about today. We learned that Mount Vernon has a library that not only houses books, but also archival materials. The librarians here work to make those materials accessible to anyone doing historic research, such as employees at Mount Vernon, historians, or people learning about their own family histories. To learn more about genealogy, the Washington Library, enslaved peoples, and the Washingtons, visit our webpage. Click the subscribe button below and the bell icon to get notifications for new videos about George Washington and behind the scenes work at Mount Vernon.